Hello again, brothers, sisters, Church of the Living God. Ooh, got a good video here, hopefully, Lord willing. Um, this video is going to kind of tie in a little bit with the previous video that I have just done. Um, so we're going to get into this, but first, let's pray. Come on. Father, here we are again, Lord, with, um, oh, Lord, this, this is, um, this is big, this is serious, Lord Jesus Christ, and, um, please remove me from this equation, Lord, that thou, O Lord, may be present to teach the body of Christ, the church of the living God, my brothers and sisters, Lord, I am incapable of doing this. Please get me out of the way, Lord, that Thou, O Lord, may be glorified. Please give us, Lord, eyes to see, ears to hear, and understanding hearts. Please give us wisdom, understanding, and knowledge, and all skill and learning, Lord. May You open up our understanding to understand the Scriptures, and may You expound to us the Scriptures, Lord. Please feed us with the sincere milk of Your Word, and wash us in Your Word. Please speak, Lord, for your servants hear it. Please, Spirit of Truth, Lord Jesus Christ, our God, our Father, please guide us into all truth. Speak unto these people, unto your congregation, Lord. Have mercy upon me, the sinner who is chief. Please have great pity upon me. This is serious, Lord. This is your word. And um, maybe may you give me what I what is needed to do this well according to your own will. And may you be glorified, Lord Jesus Christ our Father, by your word. And we all ask this, Church of the Living God. In the name of our Lord, our Savior, our Father, Jesus Christ, wash us in your word. And in Jesus' name, God's people said, Amen. All right. Get your authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures. We are going to have an expository study of Romans chapter 6. <coughs> um, incidentally, if you got one of these things, you're going to want to use it. Because we are going to be going through quite a few scriptures today. But we are going to have an expository study video here on Romans chapter 6. We, we're going to go through this whole thing. I hope you can handle it. <laughs> okay, so get your scriptures. Again, I expect you to follow me along in the scriptures that we will be looking over today. Don't just sit there. Get the scriptures. Okay? Get the scriptures and follow me along. Let's go. Romans chapter 6. We're going to read this whole chapter. Got quite a few things we're going to look at. Scripture with scripture. Okay? Romans chapter 6, beginning with verses 1 and verse 2. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin? that grace may abound. God forbid, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. 
verses 17 on to verse 24. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk, in the vanity of their mind, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling, have given themselves over unto lasciviousness. Lasciviousness is lightness, making light of things. Okay? You have a Webster's 1828 dictionary, you check the meaning out for that of yourselves. But let's continue. To work all uncleanness with greediness. But ye have not so learned Christ. If, circle that, if so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, that ye put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitfulness, uh, according to the deceitful lusts. Excuse me. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. So see, go back now to Romans chapter 6. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Let's, let's keep on sinning like it's no big deal because grace is there. Let's keep on keeping on. Let's, let's not allow the Lord to clean up our life, but let us stay as we were before we got saved without any change, which the Lord brings upon you. Okay? But there again, he ain't pointing a gun to your head. Neither is the devil. Okay? I'm going to say that and do that quite often till you get it through your head. And stop making excuses for yourself. I, okay? God forbid, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Now, let's read verses 3 and 4. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. Galatians chapter 2. And these cheap gracer twits says should, we don't have to. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and what kind of life are you going to live? Oh, I, I live a really great life because, yeah, 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 you're, you're not saved. You're not saved. You say stuff like that. It says should. We don't have to. You're justifying your sin. You're justifying your sin. It's all you're doing. Get over yourself. You cling to that one says should. We ought to. You ain't saved. Who you, who you think you kidding? Oh, others like yourself, right? Yeah. Yeah, get over yourself. Get over yourself. It's pretty disgusting. Galatians chapter 2, verses 16, under verse 21. Verses 16 on to verse 21 in Galatians chapter 2. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law. Circle it. You know, get, get, your, get your little pen. Circle it. Circle that. Okay. Circle that. But by the faith of Jesus. Circle that. Okay. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ, and not by the works of the law. 
for by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. No flesh be justified. Note that. That no flesh shall be justified. But if, while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves also are found sinners. Is therefore Christ the minister of sin? God forbid. For if I build again the things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. You saved, born again, of the church of the living God. Put this thing away. But then you go back to it. Is there chastisement? Is there affliction for it? No, there isn't any. Then guess what? You ain't saved. Is there affliction and chastisement? <laughs> yeah. Right. Then repent and get right with the Lord. Quit messing around. What's wrong with you? For I, through the law, am dead to the law. Remember, the law was there to bring us on to Christ. The law is there to show us how inept we are. That we need to be saved. We need the man, Christ Jesus. Okay, let's continue. For I, through the law, am dead to the law, that I might live unto God. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet, not I, but Christ liveth in me. Christ liveth in you. I thought the Holy Ghost lived within me. Yeah. Yeah. God the Father lives in you. Yeah. The Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? Let's continue. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness came by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Then Christ is dead in vain. Note this. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. See, again, you're saved, you're born again, you're sealed, you're going to heaven whether you like it or not. Okay? But, look at here, verse 20. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Okay? You live according to the scriptures. Okay? The Lord will quicken your mortal body, your flesh. Okay? You can't do it by the law or by the deeds of the law. But it says right here, for by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. And see, these cheap gracers will take justification to a sewage level to justify their own sins. Second Corinthians chapter 5. Second Corinthians chapter 5. Hold your place there. Keep your bookmark in Romans chapter 6, but keep your place here. In Galatians, okay? Check this out. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 17 on to verse 21. Okay? Second Corinthians chapter 5, verses 17 on to verse 21. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. 
and all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. To wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Now, back to Galatians chapter 2, verses 16 on to verse 21 again. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ, and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. But if while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves also are found sinners. Is therefore Christ the minister of sin? God forbid. For if I build again the things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. For I through the law am dead to the law, that I might live unto God. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness came by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 21 For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God. In him. <laughs> oh, don't you dare sit there and tell me this. Well, it says ought. We should put on. It's, you don't have to. Those of you who cling to that, you're not saved. How could you be? And cling to that, wanting your sin over the righteousness of God that is in him, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's continue. Verses 5 on to verse 9 in Romans chapter 6. For if, circle it, circle if, for if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. It doesn't say slaves. You have a choice. Okay? <laughs> You're not being held at gunpoint. But you are going to reap heavy consequences. And maybe even your own death if you are truly saved. If you mess around with sin. Okay? Let's continue. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more, death hath no more dominion over him. Romans chapter 8 now. Verses 1 under verse 17. Okay? Check this out. There is uh, Romans 8, verses 1 under verse 17. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. 
for what the law could not do, and that it was weak through the flesh. God sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, circle that, condemn sin in, circle that, the flesh. Condemned sin in the flesh. Guess what, cousin? As long as we are here and we aren't up with the Lord, we haven't died yet, we are housed in the flesh, the sagging skin suit. Okay? While we are in the sagging skin suit, we are going to sin. We are going to struggle with sin. Yes. Yes, we are. But God's grace is not a license to sin, nor it is, is it an excuse to sin. See, you're going to sin while you're still here in the, skin, in the sagging skin suit. Because what does it say? And for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. Guess what? Flesh is sinful. Your thoughts can be sin, yes. What's in your heart can be sin, definitely. Flesh is sinful too. Okay, let's continue. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. Note the capital S is there. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Want some signs of someone who is in the flesh? Justifying their sins, excusing sins, hiding behind the shield of, oh, God's grace covers it all. You don't have to. It says you should. You ought. Yeah, I, I have a foul mouth that's full of dung, but hey, hey, I, I repent, but yet there's no change. There's no conviction, right? Yeah, hiding behind that, the, that uh, little shield you like to hold up of grace, right? Cheapening it? Or what about that other shield that you hold up? Oh, I'm struggling with it. Yeah, where's the struggle? Where's the struggle? Are you struggling when you let your temper get the best of you? And you let uh, dung flee out of your mouth, huh? Are you struggling then? Are you struggling while you're on a computer? Looking at pornography. Are you struggling? Are you struggling? When you got the bottle of booze. Are you really struggling? Or are you justifying? Hiding? Yeah. Let's continue. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit... If, circle that, if so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Okay, now, now get this picture, okay? Hold on. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Okay, now, this up. Hold your place here, okay? What do we see? I have to do this, beg your pardon. It says, Spirit of God. Spirit of Christ, right? Hold your place. Go to Ephesians chapter 2. Come on, come on, come on. Ephesians chapter 2. Oh no, excuse me. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13. In whom ye also trusted. Ephesians 1, verse 13. In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, 
the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Right? Okay? Okay? So, okay. Check this out. Check this out now. Okay? We see the Spirit of God, the Spirit of Christ, Holy Spirit of, of promise. Oh boy. So do we have three persons living <laughs> within us? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Of course, brethren. Of course. I got a, any chance the Lord will give me. I'm going to kick that. I'm going to kick that like a mule. I'm going to kick that like a mule, boy. And uh, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Okay. <laughs> 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17. Now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Guess what? There's only one God. And he's comprised of spirit, soul, and body. So you have God the Father living in you, the Holy Ghost, the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? Just one God. Not three persons that make one God. Okay? I, I, I'm I sorry. That was a wabbit trail. Beg your pardon. I, I, I could not resist that. So, let's continue. Okay. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the Spirit, capital S, is life because of righteousness. What did we already read? That we might become be the righteousness of God in him. And what did we see right here in verse 3? And for sin condemns sin in the flesh. The body is dead because of sin. Get it? Okay, let's continue. Okay. But if, circle that if, the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. I don't know how any one of you can cling to being a Trinitarian. I really do not. It just baffles me. It really does. It baffles me. <laughs> For storming the castle. Okay. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the Spirit, that's a lowercase s, of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the Spirit, capital S, of course, of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit. Note that one is capital, one is lowercase. Note that. That we are children, that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him that we may be also glorified together. Okay? Do we get this so far? Yes? 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 Okay. Okay. Now, go back to, to Romans chapter 6, verses 10 and 11 now. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Wait, yeah. Verses 10 and on ver to verse 11, because we read up to verse 9. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Okay, now... First Peter, we're gonna yeah, I'm gonna kick Catholicism right here, okay? First Peter, chapter three, one verse in First Peter chapter three, 
First Peter chapter 3, just one verse. Verse 18. For Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. And now, go to Hebrews chapter 10. Oh, thank you. Hebrews chapter 10, verses 5, on to verse 14. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, uh, Hebrews 10, verses 5, on to verse 14. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared for me. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin thou hast had no pleasure. Then said I, Lo, I come. In the volume of the book it is written of me, to do thy will, O God. Above when he said sacrifice and offering and burnt offerings, and offering for sin thou wouldest not, neither hadst pleasure therein, which are offered by the law, then said he, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He taketh away the first, that he may establish the second. By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. And every priest standeth daily, ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God, from henceforth expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. For by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. Wherefore the Holy Ghost also is witness to us. For after that he had said before, uh, I was supposed to read to 14, but Forgive me for uh, keep reading on for, for like that, but we were supposed to read only to verse 14, so beg your pardon. But we get that point, right? Once, just one offering. Okay, had to kick Catholicism while I was at it. Sorry. Okay. The nonsense Trinity and the Eucharistic thing, the, the Mass. Nonsense. Garbage. Okay. Now, let's read verses 12 on to verse 14. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God, as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. First Thessalonians. First Thessalonians chapter 4. First Thessalonians chapter 4. Verses 1 under verse 12. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 1 under verse 12. Furthermore, then, we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus, that as ye have received of us how ye ought to walk, and to please God, so ye would abound more and more. <clears throat> For ye know what commandments we gave you by the Lord Jesus. Yes, the Lord Jesus had given commandments. And yes, there are commandments for us to follow today as the church of the living God. Get over yourself. I'm not talking to you, brethren. I'm talking to the enemies. Let's continue. For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that ye should abstain from fornication, that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor, not in the lust of concupiscence, animalistic lust, even as the Gentiles which know not God. 
See, you're saved and born again. There ought to be a distinction between you and the lost. But if you're claiming to be a Christian, and I've seen people who were professed atheists be accused of being Christians, while there were those who were calling themselves Christians were worse than most lost people. But they're Christians. Yeah. Because they ain't of the church of the living God. <laughs> um, if you're if you're say if you say you're a Christian but yet there's no distinction between you and a lost person are you saved oh I'm just I'm just struggling in sin yeah yeah I bet you are yeah I bet you are yeah yeah where's your chastisement Hmm. Where's your affliction? Let's continue. Verse 6. That no man go beyond and defraud his brother in any matter. Oops. Because that the Lord is, an, is the avenger of all such, as we also have forewarned you and testified. For God hath not called us unto uncleanness, but unto holiness. He therefore that despiseth, despiseth not man, but God, who hath also given unto us his Holy Spirit. Jesus Christ, our God and Father, just one God. My goodness, you sad Trinitarians. And there are those of you who I would actually consider friends, but when it comes to the Trinity over the Godhead, uh, uh, this script, these scriptures teach one God comprised of spirit, soul, and body, not three persons that make one God. Why don't you get your head from up? Let's continue. But as touching brotherly love, ye need not that I write unto you, for ye yourselves are taught of God to love one another. And there are several brethren out there who I know personally who put most of the Church of the Living God as far as mercy, charity, love, and kindness to shame. Fine brethren. Fine brethren. How you doing at that? Let's continue. And indeed, ye do it toward all the brethren which are in Macedonia. But we beseech you, brethren, that ye increase more and more, and that ye study to be quiet, and to do your own business, and to work with your own hands, as we commanded you, that ye may walk honestly toward them that are without, and that ye may have lack of nothing. Walk honestly. With them that are before them that are with, toward them that are without. Excuse me. How are you going to do that when you're covering up your sin? When you're cheapening God's grace and saying, "Oh, it says ought, we should. You don't have to." The Lord rebuke you, you devils. The Lord rebuke you, you devils. Ephesians chapter 2. Now, about Ephesians chapter 2, okay, uh, we are going to pretty much cover all of Ephesians chapter 2, pretty much, uh, but we're going to cut it into sections, okay? You'll see, and you'll see why. Okay, we are going to read all of Ephesians chapter 2, but we're going to do it in pieces, okay? You will plainly see why, but go to Ephesians chapter 2. Not that way, Brad. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 4 on to verse 12. 
Ephesians chapter 2, verses 4, under verse 12. Not far, Brad. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 4, under verse 12. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace ye are saved. Not your mental thought of just agreeing to truth in your head. You don't believe yourself saved. It is by grace you are saved. And hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might shew the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by belief are ye saved through faith. For by grace. Are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves? It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. What are we reading? Wherefore remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands, that at that time ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. Okay? Now, Back to Romans chapter 6, verse 15. What then shall we sin? Because we are not under the law, but under grace. God forbid. Now, look at verse 1. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? The changed life. Okay? Look at verse 15. What then? Shall we sin? Because we are not under the law, but under grace. God forbid. Very quickly, Romans. Romans uh, chapter 2. One second, brethren. Got to pause this. Okay, sorry about that. I had the wrong chapter. Romans chapter 3. Verses 3 under verse 8. For what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? God forbid, yea, let God be true, but every man a liar, as it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings, and might overcome when thou art judged. Look at this. But if our unrighteousness commend the righteousness of God, what shall we say? Is God unrighteous who taketh vengeance? I speak as a man. God forbid. For then how shall God judge the world? For if the truth of God hath more abounded through my lie unto his glory, why yet am I also judged as a sinner? And not rather, as we be slanderously reported, and some, and as some affirm that we say, let us do evil, that good may come, whose damnation is just. These are two different things, verse 1 and verse 15. Okay, they are addressing two different arguments. What then, shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. And one more on this. Jude, verse 4. Jude, verse 4. And this verse particularly, 
is what every single cheap gracer out there is and is doing. Jude verse 4. For there are certain men crept in unawares. Now we know a lot of you, but there are still some that are unawares yet. Lord's weeding you out. Who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our Lord, of our God, into lasciviousness, and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Cheapening, lightening God's grace. That's what every single one of you free grace people do. You make the grace of God into lasciviousness. How dare you? See, you disgusting free gracers. You turn the grace of God into lasciviousness. You have no true understanding of what grace really is. Because you're not broken. Because you just believe. And you might say, well, hey, see, it said in Romans chapter 3. Yeah, keep reading Romans chapter 3. Okay, especially, especially here in Romans chapter 3. Okay, <laughs> uh, the one part that you free cheap gracers like to jump over, verses 10 on to verse 18. Okay, what you cheap gracers like to just go, woohoo, and go straight to believe. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, unless you cheap gracer guys and girls, you're not ladies. Um, repent of your pride, your self righteousness, and come to the Lord broken. You're going to be in hell with the door shut. Have fun storming the castle. But we see, brethren, do you see the two the differences between these two? Do you see that? What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? You're going to have a changed life. You cannot remain the same as you were if you are truly saved and born again. It is impossible. And see, these cheap gracers, and you know, oh, you don't have to shut your mouth. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Okay? Well, over here, what then? Shall we sin because we are not under law but under grace? God forbid. Go ahead and sin, that grace may abound. Let us do evil, that good may come. Hey, the more evil we do, the more good is going to come to us? No. If that's in your little brain case, you really need to examine yourself, whether or not you're truly saved. You really do. These are... Asked in two different ways. Okay? Verses 1 and 2 is addressing the changed life. Whereas verse 15 is addressing those who think that the more sin there is, the more better we are. Two different things. Do you see that? Do you see that? And with the scripture verses we looked at, you see that, right? Okay, let's continue. Verse 16. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants, not slaves, to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. Romans chapter 5, verses 6 under verse 11, right across, right across. 
For when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet peradventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commendeth his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. If, this, if that don't hit you, and you still want to cheapen grace, you got a lot of problems with yourself. You really do. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if, when we were, were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his Son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. Verse 16 again. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom you ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness? Okay? First John chapter 3. First John chapter 3. First John chapter 3, verses 16 under verse 24. 1 John chapter 3, verses 16 on to verse 24. Hereby perceive we the love of God, because he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. But whoso hath this world's good, and seeth his brother have need, and shutteth up his bowels of compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of God in him? My little children, let us not love and word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. And hereby we know, circle it. Actually, very quickly, next time you read 1 John, take your little pen, or get a piece of paper, and mark how many times the word know appears. K-N-O-W. Do it. You'll be astonished. Let's continue. And hereby we know that we are of the truth and shall assure our hearts before him. For if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart and knoweth all things. God knows my heart. He's in my heart. One of the weakest, lamest excuses to continue in sin <laughs> and to try to justify yourself. Uh, I won't get off on that, so let's continue. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. And this is his commandment, that we should believe on the name of his son, Jesus Christ and love one another, as he gave us commandment. And he that keepeth his commandments dwelleth in him, and he in him. And hereby we know that he abideth in us by the Spirit which he hath given us. Now, verses 17 on to verse 18. In Romans chapter 6. But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. Being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. Ephesians now chapter 2. Verses 1 on 2, on verses 1 on to verse 3, okay? 
like I said, we're going to cover the whole chapter of Ephesians chapter 2, but just in pieces. And you're going to see why. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. And you hath he quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit, lowercase s, that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past, in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. Those who are not saved, those who are not of the church of the living God, and even worse, those who call themselves Christians and are not of the church of the living God. You're a child of disobedience and a child of wrath. You ain't saved. You heard the gospel. You reject it. God's wrath is upon you and for you. His grace is not there for you. He's, he's there, ready to forgive. But if you reject it, and you die without God's grace saving you, guess what? You're going to go to hell. Why so many of you want to mess around with that, I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why. Okay? Now, skipping what we read earlier, verses 13 under verse 22. You see? You see why we skip that? Now, verse 13 under verse 22 in Ephesians chapter 2. But now in Christ Jesus, ye who were sometimes, ye who sometimes were far off, are made nigh by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace, who hath made both one, and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make in himself of twain one new man, so making peace, and that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby, and came and preached peace to you which were afar off, and to them that were nigh. For through him, circle it, we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. Now therefore ye are no more strangers or and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints, and of the household of God, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Peter himself being the chief corner. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> A little congestion there. I had to. And are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth on to a holy temple in the Lord, in whom ye are in whom ye also are builded together for an habitation of God through the Spirit. Okay? Now very quickly Galatians chapter three. Okay, Galatians chapter 3, in twain, one new man, okay? Galatians chapter 3, verses 28 under verse 29. Uh, let's read verse, um, verses 27 under verse 29. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ, 
There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And if ye be Christ's, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Okay? Salvithically, there is no distinction. Okay? You are saved and born again. It don't matter if you're a Jew, if you're a Gentile, if you're a Republican, a Democami, okay? Man, woman, black, white, green, yellow, chartreuse, whatever. Salvithically, we are all one in Christ Jesus. Within salvation today, in the time of the Gentiles, there is no distinction in salvation. There is distinction when it comes to culture. There is distinction within culture. God is a God of distinction. But today, in the time of the Gentiles, salvifically, there is no distinction. Okay? There's not one way for the Jew and then one way for us Gentiles. That's heresy. No. Salvifically, you're all one. Culturally, that's something totally different. That's something totally different. There are distinctions culturally. Salvifically, no. Culturally, yes. Okay? Get it? I might get into that in another video at some later time, whatever the Lord will do. Okay? So, let's continue now. Romans verse 19. Uh, Romans 6 verse 19. I speak after the manner of men, because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as ye, ha for as ye have yielded your members' servants to uncleanness and to iniquity unto iniquity, even so now yield your members' servants to righteousness unto holiness. And of course, with that one, uh, verse uh, 9 Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. There are certain individuals that call the changed life gospel heresy. Hi, all of those of you who say that, you're lost. You're lost. You're not saved. You've been exposed. Okay? We, the church of the living God, know you're fake. Okay, now we're going to read verses 20 under verse 23. Verse 20. For when you were the servants of sin, you were free from righteousness. 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 25 and verse 26. Okay. In meekness, 2 Timothy 2, verses 25 and 26. In meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves, if God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth, and that they may recover themselves. Okay, are you looking at that? You, you better be. You, come on. And that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. See, they're snared in the snare of the devil, taken captive by him at his will, because their father is Satan. If you ain't saved, your father is Satan. You don't know him because her ways are always movable. And remember, Satan's church is the Roman Catholic Church. Okay? 
Her ways are always movable, but thou canst know them. Like people who have one YouTube channel uh, or have probably hundreds and keep changing the name of them so that can't be traced or blocked or starting a new channel in order to infiltrate. How stupid! How pathetic that is! Changing their channel name constantly so they can't be traced. <laughs> channel after channel after channel after channel. <laughs> oh, what, 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 how, how grotesque, how stupid, how... Uh, you know, and very quickly, brethren, a little off. I, I feel sorry. I, I really, honestly, truly feel sorry for those who do that. I truly do. All you're doing is showing how pathetic you truly are. You're pathetic. You poor creature, you. Good luck at the great white throne of judgment. Now... Verses 21 under verse 23. What fruit had ye then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now being made free from sin and become servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death. Circle that. Circle the is. But the gift of God, circle this, is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. Verses 1 under verse 21. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 1 under verse 21. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children, and walk in love, as Christ also hath loved us, and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savor. But fornication, and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as become a saints. Neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. I do know of several brethren of the Church of the Living God, truly saved and born again. Brethren who I would die for, um, who do struggle, legitimately struggle with the mouth. Um, it will take a lot for them, not just having their toes stepped on or getting lightly irritated, or whenever they get irritated, they constantly cuss. It's a dead giveaway, by the way, that someone's lost. Okay, putting on a facade that they're so meek. But the minute they get angry, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, get over yourself. But I do know of brethren who struggle legitimately with that. And the minute they, they the minute they let out a curse word, they're like, they say it, it's like, oh. and you're like, oh, Lord, I, I, Lord, I'm sorry, forgive me, I repent, I, 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 I have no excuse. I, 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 there's no excuse, I'm no, I'm sorry. But to keep rattling on, See, that's the difference between someone who struggles, okay? Someone who struggles with a filthy mouth, swearing and cussing like that. Um, it's, it's right here. And it, 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 it comes into their brain, but they're like, not going to do it, not going to do it. Or if in a quick moment, like dropping a couch on your toe <laughs> or something like that, um, it happens. 
But see, the difference is the immediate, oh, oh, no, and repenting to the Lord rather than just relishing in it. And then, oh, I'll, I'll repent of it later. People are fooled by guys like that. They want to be fooled. Or misery love company, loves company. Or they have pleasure in them that do the same sins. So, not me. Let's continue. Verse 5. On the verse, oh, continuing in Ephesians chapter 5. For this ye know, that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man, who is an idolater, hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Not talking about saved church of the living God that mess up. No. Were you reading in Ephesians chapter 2 with me? No. This is talking about lost people. Uh, children of disobedience are people who have heard the truth, know the truth, reject the truth. The wrath of God is on them. Okay? Let's continue. Be not ye therefore partakers with them. For ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit, capital S, is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. I had to part company with someone who I, who I enjoyed um, commenting with and um, I, I had prayed for. Um, it hurt me to do so. I did not want to do that. I, I did. I had to part company with someone who I would consider a friend. But see, the problem was he's a diehard Trinitarian. And you could say, I'm a diehard Godhead believer. I believe in who God truly is. The Trinity is not real. It's fake. It's a lie. It's of Satan. Okay? And unfortunately, unfortunately, that became an issue. And several brethren, uh, uh, specifically um, the uh, sweet, beloved brother Aaron Judge and also brother Matthew Groon, um, you know, and several and several other brethren kind of re rebuked me but like Brad you believe who God really is what are you doing <sighs> yeah well Brad Brad and of course these fine brethren um, they would be like, Brad, I didn't rebuke you. Yes, you did. And I love you for it. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. Because I was choosing my own feelings over the truth. And like I said, and if, if the said person still is watching this, um, still watches me, um, I really hated to do that. But when it comes to who God really is, I can't agree to disagree with anybody. I can't. And I can't look past it. I can't. So. The longer you walk with the Lord, the more you appreciate the uh, rebuke from godly brethren. So let's continue. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. But all things that are approved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Wherefore he saith, 
Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. What is a fool? Huh? The fool has said in his heart there is no God? What, what chapter and verse? Huh? Oh, excuse me. Those don't have chapters. There, I slap myself for you. There, Brother Alexander and Brother Matthew O'Melanson. <laughs> okay. Verse 16. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Giving thanks always for all things. Boy, that's tough, ain't it? Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. One and the same. Jesus is the Father. If I may, thank you to every brother who has ever corrected me. You know who you are. Thank you to every brother and sister. I, I have been rebuked by a sister before. Rightly. Okay. A woman can rebuke a man according to the book, according to the scriptures. Okay. Can. Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you to the brothers and sisters who have rebuked me. I thank the Lord for affliction. I thank the Lord for persecution. I thank the Lord for suffering. I thank the Lord for poverty, for necessity, for distress. I thank him for my bad tooth and gum. I did it myself. That doesn't come easily. That comes with time. But you will reach a place. You will reach a point in your walk with the Lord. When all you can do is say thank you. Especially when there are cases when you know you deserve worse. And that's in everything. Those of you, my brothers and sisters out there, you're far better than I ever will be. And I mean that. I know that. And it says, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. One more. James chapter 1. James chapter 1. I'm going to end it with this. Now, James chapter 1 is written unto who? Huh? Yes, the Jews. Yes. How do you prove it? The very verse, very first verse. You read it yourself. But let's note something. James chapter 1, verses 12 and on to 15. Now this is also for the time of Jacob's trouble. But, get a load of this. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God, can, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. God doesn't tempt a man to do evil. He doesn't. And about the, why did God tempt Abraham? I have a video on that somewhere, I think. 
Yeah, yeah, I do. It has the uh, the a uh, uh, what do you call those things? Thumbnail on there. That's supposed to be Abraham and Isaac. So go find that if you want. Okay. But let's continue. But right here. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then, when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, what? Bringeth forth death. Romans 6, verse 23. For the wages of sin is death. What do you, how do you get wages? You earn wages, right? You know that one? Go figure it out, right? Okay. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. You know, those who preach this nonsensical, heretical free grace stuff, you don't fear God. How can you? How can you? When in reality, you're cheaping the grace of God. How afraid are you? Hi, hi, hi. How afraid am I? How afraid am I of God? The Lord giveth, and the Lord can take away. The Lord hath given, the Lord hath given, the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Remember in Job? who was a righteous man, one who feared God and eschewed evil, right? And God allowed Satan to take virtually everything away from him. And Job said, the Lord gave, the Lord has taken away, blessed be the name of the Lord. That's in Job chapter 1. Feel free to go find that on your own time. The Lord has given, and in any given moment, he can take it away. But do you fear God for the right reasons? Do you fear Him for the right reasons? Do you love Him for the right reasons? Do you love God just because He gives you stuff? Or do you love Him for who He is? And who is He? One of three persons? I just want I know a brethren who sin who um, have problems with sin but they don't make excuses about of it I'll tell you the truth I have a lot of more respect for someone who sins and said yeah yeah, I'm, I'm, I sin, and I ain't going to make no excuses over it. I have a lot more, ex I, I have a lot of respect for people like that. I tend to not deal well with someone who is in sin, but lays excuse, an excuse, an excuse. Or when they're called out for their sin. Turn it back at the person who is calling them out. That's bad. 
That's very bad. That's very, very bad. Okay? This is what the Lord gave me to, to, to do, to speak about. And um, with these two videos, which I'm going to, it's uh, 2.16 right now, my time. I'm going to, I didn't take my dog out for a walk. Uh, the Lord's like, Brad, get this done. Do it. <laughs> now get to work. All right, brother? <laughs> Okay, <laughs> but <laughs> uh, for who that is intended, I love you so much. I love you so much. We're praying for you. But um, had uh, he wanted me to get these done. So um, anyway, may the Lord be glorified. May the Lord be glorified. I love you so much. Um, thank you for watching. If you if you do, I hope this these two videos have helped someone. Uh, I know they're going to offend somebody <laughs> when you talk about sin. You usually do. So anyway, I gotta go. Gotta take Zena out, and it's eerily quiet out there. So I love you, brethren. Uh, we are praying for so many of you. Look at me. You, you are not forgotten in prayer. I because I'm not on this laptop that often. I've I've missed to my shame the privilege to have fellowship with many of you, and that is my shame, and that is my loss. Uh, but I I I. I ain't forgetting any single one of you in prayer. I might not talk to you all the time. But I talk to our Lord about you. I pray for you. Every day. Every single solitary day. Okay? You get that? I love you. And I don't know when the next video will be. Won't be too long. It's up to the Lord. So, anyway, I love you. Have a blessed rest of your week. Because this is the first day of the week. It's Sunday. So, may you be blessed. Church of the living God, my brothers and sisters. In Jesus' name, God's people said, Amen. Bye-bye.